Arsenal's links to Victor Goyocarez have been pretty consistent, but there is some news that may be certainly alarming for those hoping to see the Swedish striker at the Emirates next season. There's also plenty of news surrounding Arsenal's youngsters and hailing graduates and whether or not they'll be at the club next season. And we need to talk about something a little bit more serious as well. Let's go to the show in today's Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Thank you as always for joining me and making this a part of your morning routines. It's incredibly appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic week and you're ready for a very chill Arsenal-less weekend. Of course, there is no Arsenal because of international football taking place. I'll be heading off to Wembley this afternoon to watch England against Brazil, although most of Arsenal's players in that game have now pulled out. Of course, there's no Bakaya Saka, there's no Gabriel Magalhaes or Martinelli, and there's no Gabriel Jesus because he was not called up. And now you've got, of course, Declan Rice and Aaron Ramsdale, who could take part in today's game. There's been a number of players pull out as well. We've seen Harry Kane is, is not going to be there, not going to be available. So we're getting an opportunity to see Ollie Watkins, Ivan Tony potentially play most of the game up top against the Brazil side that will also be missing a number of its key players. But there will be the likes of Vinicius Jr. Uh, on display and some of the other usual uh, very talented Brazilian players against this England side in a friendly at Wembley for the first time in, in a fair few years. I think since like Neymar was really on the scene. So should be an interesting game. Very much looking forward to it. Can't wait to see... Uh, what happens. But uh, let's jump into the chat box and say good morning to those joining us. Temi, Tabani, Barry, uh, Damien. Uh, we've got AB. We've got Granddaddy Guna, Matt G, Shiv, Amira, Stevie, Rich, Louie, Jackie, Arthur. We've got Trader Mike. We've got Odorile, Martin, Kaiser, Maximius, uh, other Martin, Mr. E, Stephen, Peter. And uh, Peter's asking when the UK Daylight Savings is, um, because for those that are interested are based outside of here in the UK, you need to be aware of this, of course, because, well, um, this, it changes the time of when the show is. And I can tell you that it, I believe it's it's next Sunday. Um, so I think the, out, the clocks go forward. We lose an hour here in the UK. Um, so we get more daylight in evening time, I believe is the uh, the strategy there. So yeah, the, the show will change time. I'll give you more information about that when it comes closer to next week. But of course the show, if you're based outside of the UK uh, and you're not involved in this daylight savings, it will be changing next weekend. Um, so just be ready ready for that um, and be prepared for that. And I also do want to give out a shout out to, of course, our good friend of the show, long-term listener, Morgie and his relative Connor as well. Um, because they were celebrating a fantastic day last week, of which they even got a shout-out from the Arsenal women's team as well. So, Connor, if you're listening, I hope you're doing very well, my friends, and enjoying the show. Um, let's jump, though, into today's stories. We're going to kick off with the well, with the, the frustrating news. Uh, of course, yesterday we touched upon the three Arsenal fans that have been given three-year bans in relation to tragedy chanting. Uh, Isan Khan of Mail Sport has uh, the story and he has said that three Arsenal fans who were part of the Ashburton Army have been given the banning order. Uh, the banning order was given for singing Hillsborough chants during the FA Cup third round defeat to Liverpool in January. So uh, there was obviously, I think it was, I think it was Matt um, Thornton in the chat box yesterday was suggesting it was indeed three members of the Ashburton Army, and that has indeed, it seems, uh, been reported elsewhere. So I wanted to to recircle to that or circle back to that and discuss it. Um, this isn't the first time, of course, the Ashburton Army have had um, issues um, with certain members within the group. Does it mean that the group as a whole is, is, is a bad thing? Of course not. We don't want to, you know, generalise these things, but there is certainly an emphasis that needs to be taken by those that are the organisers within the, within the group about the actions of those within it and how we can improve things because it's only going to worsen the reputation. And so hopefully actions are put in place so that the right people, of course, are brought into the group and that you haven't got these characters that are willing and doing some disgusting things, as we've uh, sadly seen in the start of the year. But thankfully, of course, the club have taken the right action. They've banned those fans for three years, you know, um, and hopefully once those three years are up, they return to the game 
changed and educated on the topic as to why they shouldn't have done what they did. Uh, moving forward and into more Arsenal-related on-the-field stuff. And Odegaard played 68, uh, 86 minutes sorry, in a 2-1 defeat to Czechia. It also saw Oscar Bob play and Erling Haaland play. Quite the goal scored by Oscar Bob. Fantastic technical ability from the right-hand side, cutting inside, beating two players before slamming the ball into the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, Odegaard didn't necessarily have, uh, as far as I'm aware, at least uh, too much influence on uh, proceedings as uh, Norway played out a pretty disappointing result and probably one which is identifiable with why they have struggled so much to get anywhere close to an international tournament. So we wait and see to see if Norway's fortunes will improve for the next World Cup, of course, um, and whether they'll be able to qualify. They've got two of the best, I mean, arguably three if you're going to count Bob, and then you can talk about Noosa as well. They've got some of the most talented players on the planet in Haaland and Odegaard and Bob and, of course, um, I think it's, uh, I've just mentioned him, Antonio Nusa. I think I saw an interview recently where Erling Haaland was talking about how the level drops. Well, maybe he needs to start contributing a bit more if he's concerned about the level dropping for his national side so he can actually try and help them go towards an international tournament. But uh, what is good about Norway is their kits. Um, we can absolutely say that with all certainty. Uh, I missed this yesterday, so I thought I'd bring it up. Um, Kivior played uh, on Thursday uh, in a 5-1 win over Estonia for Poland. And he actually did an interview where he spoke about his conversations with Wojciech Szczesny. Szczesny basically just told him to win uh, when he came to Arsenal, but did mention that Szczesny apparently cannot watch Arsenal games because he finds them too stressful to watch. I can certainly empathise, and I know a lot of other fans will as well, with Wojciech Szczesny, who is just getting too stressed watching Arsenal's games. We know the guy's a fan. He loves the club, even though he wasn't, of course, here for the long term and left to join Juventus, where he's had an excellent career in Italy. Uh, ultimately, we know his desire and and uh, and his love for the club is is there. He's also someone that I think a lot of fans have suggested maybe Arsenal could look to sign as a replacement for Ramsdale and be Arsenal's number two in the future if he'd be willing to come back and play under Mikel Arteta if Arteta sees him as a capable option for the team. So that, I think that'd be an interesting one to see. Um, it really would be an interesting one to see uh, whether or not uh, Szczesny would be open to a return to Arsenal, whether Arsenal be a, open to a return for Chesney. Uh, now, Charles Watts has been speaking in his uh, court offside, I think reported this. Um, Nelson is said, according to our good friend Charles Watts, um, to be likely to leave the club this summer. Enketia and Smith Rowe, another two potential exits who would ask, arguably get Arsenal a really good amount of money because they came through the academy. It means any sale would represent pure profit on the books and really help with their profit and sustainability regulation um, how they deal with that, how they abide by it, and how they can then reinvest that money as well. So certainly uh, plenty to be excited about, us. I think, for the summer. All of the incomings and outgoings, we're going to be across all of it and discussing whether or not Arsenal made the right choices. And it's going to be really interesting to see how much money Arsenal can get for some of their key players. But our headline story of the day uh, comes from a number of outlets reporting different stories surrounding the Arsenal transfer target, Victor it is said, according to Portuguese media, that Sporting now want to get him to sign a brand new contract that will see his release clause rise from 100 million euros to 120 million euros. A significant increase that would take that price well beyond 100 million pounds if anyone was to activate it. There's not been necessarily any indications about how keen Goyocares is to change that release clause, whether he sees an avenue out of the club in the summer through the current release clause that he's got remains to be seen. But not only that, but it's said, according to Spanish media, that Atletico Madrid have also entered the race to potentially sign Guyo Carrez and that they see him as a potential replacement in the long term for their forward, who has been doing brilliantly well this season, and that you all know, Antoine Griezmann. So could Arsenal really be in a bit of a... Uh, a several horse race. I think mean, there's a lot of teams interested in Guyo Carrez now. The interest is only increasing after his amazing goal tallies this season. One to watch. We'll keep you updated on this one, um, but it's certainly going to be an intriguing transfer saga 
whether Arsenal move for a striker and whether it will be Victor Goyocares that it is indeed who Arsenal could go for. Now, you should be going for one of our prizes, of course, that continues to be on offer for you. I think there's around just over 40 tickets left in the competition. It's not long left to get involved in the William Saliba signed and framed Arsenal shirt. Plenty of instant win prizes as always available. All the information is in the link down in the description. It's a defender's edition inspired by plenty of Arsenal's past and present options um so do get involved with that link as i say down in the description it's a uk only competition and best of luck to all of those that have already got their tickets right let's go to part two and your questions then right after this all right then uh, jumping into the chat box and getting some of your thoughts, shall we? Um, Alvin Mod says only 122 likes. Indeed, it is our aim, our mission, to try and get a thousand likes on every single episode of this show. And it is incredibly difficult to do during weekends. It's incredibly difficult to do during an international break. And so, therefore, during an international break on the weekend, we need you more than ever to hit to hit that 1K like everyday target. I should probably, I don't think I even checked yesterday's show. Oh, we were fine. We were fine. 1,300 feet plus liking it. So the, the challenge is still very much on. So let's try and keep it going. Thank you to everybody that's already supported the channel. And if you're listening on audio platforms, you're also appreciated. Please do hop over to YouTube. Support the 1K everyday like challenge. If you're listening on Twitter, which I know plenty of you do, hop over to our YouTube. Get involved in the chat box. Ask your questions. I'll be very happy to try and answer as many of them as I can. Uh, Philip says, as it's the international break, what would your all-time Arsenal eleven using 11 different nations be? Wow. Okay, I mean, I feel like that, to do that off the top of my head is one hell of a challenge. So, okay, okay. And it's really easy to embarrass yourself with these, I tell you, really easy to embarrass yourself. Right, we're going to we're gonna do it. Um, in goal, I, oh, in goal. So what, what can we try and use? I'm trying to think of now some of the more obscure, I guess, Petr Cech for, Czech, for Czechia, the Czech Republic back when he was playing, of course. Um, you've got Chesney as well. You've got, of course, David Rea, if you want to use Spain. Um, David Seaman and Lehman, do you want to use the German or English op options there? I guess the German option, I probably would use the, yeah, I think I probably would use the German option there. So we're going to go Jens Lehman in goal. At right back, I mean, Lauren, um, what, na what nationality was Lauren? Was it a Cameroon? Was it Lauren um, from Arsenal? Was it Cameroon? Just let me double check that. Um, he was, yes, he was. It was Cameroon. Um, so I guess Lauren at right back, right? Um, because, yeah, it's a good nation. Um, so I don't think there's too many other Cameroonian players um, that we've got. So, yes, we'll go Lehman and Lehman and Lauren at centre half. This is where you're going to get, this is where it's going to get trickier because you've got some really good options for players, um, but they're all nations which you might want to use elsewhere. So obviously your Campbells, your Adamses, um, your Salibas. I mean, Gabriel's not a bad shout with being Brazilian, of course, as well. Uh, it depends how far back. My, I mean, my memory, some of you guys are going to be able to go back further than me. Uh, memory, as you've got Colo Torre, Ivory Coast is a good shout, Abby. Absolutely. Um, I guess, yeah, Colo Torre is probably a great shout for that position. So we'll go Colo Torre uh, in the back line. I think I'm going to use my England card here and go Tony Adams. So Colo Torre and Tony Adams are going to be my two centre halves. I'm tempted. Uh, does anyone think that Gabriel Magalhaes is better than Colo Torre? That's an interesting question. Is Gabriel Magalhaes a better defender than Tony Adams? That is your question of the day. I'd love to know your thoughts. I know Torre, a fantastic player. A lot of people have more recency bias, of course, as well. We can't pick Saliba because I think we know where the French uh, flag is going. It could go in one of two places, of course. Um, it's difficult. I think that there's... Some people are saying, yeah, Gabriel is. And I know Mike's watched plenty of, of Colo Torre in his youth. So uh, suggestions that Gabriel potentially being better than, than Colo Torre there. Left back. Left back. 
We've got Zinchenko, you've got Kivior, you've got Ashley Cole, you've got Kieran Gibbs, you've got Kenny Sansom, you've got um, Nigel Winterburn. We've already used our England with Tony Adams, though. Um, left back, Nacho Monreal, Kieran Tierney. You want to use the Scottish option there? <laughs> Lushny, Damien says in the chat box. Andre Santos, goodness me, you're coming up with some really crazy options. Tommy Asu for the Japanese option as well. It's been a fantastic left back for us. Um, oh, um, I think, I think Zinchenko is. I mean, Zinchenko got us into a tighter race. Didn't, didn't, hasn't won anything necessarily of Arsenal, but we are looking more of it on like on our own options, like on their individual merit. Cliche is being shut. Kalasinac, goodness gracious. Again, Cole, it's like I've already used Adam, so I can't use Cole. I, I think I think we might have to go Tierney or Zinchenko. It's whoever we think's better between Tierney and Zinchenko. I personally rate Zinchenko higher. So I'm going to personally put Zinchenko into my left back position uh, in this team. Uh, into midfield. And Liam Brady has to go in um, without question. Um, so Liam Brady is straight into centre midfield. Uh, then you have the choice of whether you use a Spaniard um, in Cesc Fabregas, of course. You've got the option to use... We haven't got Ozil because of Lehman being in goal. We could use Patrick Vieira as our Frenchman if we wanted to. Um, I am putting Martin Odegaard as a Norwegian into my midfield three. And so I'm going to put Liam Brady, Gilberto Silva and... Erdegaard as my midfield three is going to go there. Um, now, my team's going to be a bit strange because I wanted to get Bergkamp in as well. Maybe I'll have to move Erdegaard out the way for... Um... But the thing is, if you've got Brady, Sesk and Bergkamp, as like Bergkamp playing behind the striker, that's incredibly forward thinking. I feel like I've not really got much balance in that team. Um it's a tricky one. It's a great midfield, Sesk, Brady, and Bergkamp. I mean, that's amazing. But there's not too much in the way of there's not too much in the way of balance, is there? Um, so that's a really tricky one. But I think I'm gonna have to go with it. So yeah, Brady, Sesk, and Bergkamp. So you've got Sesk and Brady in this midfield pair, which makes no sense. There's no balance to it whatsoever. Um, and then of course, I think I'm gonna have to go with uh Dennis Bergkamp playing as a second striker behind whoever's up top. On the right and left flank, Alexis Sanchez on the left. There's not even a question. Chilean, brilliant nationality for this type of challenge. He goes on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you've got another good option because you've got Freddy Jumberg, Swedish option, because the Frenchman can't be Robert Pires. It can't be Patrick Vieira. It has to be, has to, has to be Thierry Henry. So that's the team. It's I don't know. You'd have to tell me if you can beat that. So going through it, you've got Jens Lehmann, Lauren, Tony Adams, Gabriel, uh, Zinchenko, Brady, Sesk, Bergkamp, Ljungberg, Alexis Sanchez, and Thierry Henry. That's, that's the team. Can you beat that team? You can only pick one nationality. Let me know in the comment sections if you've got your best Arsenal eleven. Um, let us know what you've picked. I ended up going with Gabriel over Colo Torre in the end. I just think, you, I mean, imagine the back line of Gabriel and, and Adams. No one's getting past that. No one's getting past that. Um, Torre for Gabriel and Gilberto in midfield says rejected billionaire is, is an option you could have gone for to bring a bit more balance perhaps to the midfield. But it's, you know, these are dream situations. So you're not really necessarily going to change it. But we got there. We got there in the end. That was a very international break-inspired question. So, uh, and a lot of you had your thoughts. But yeah, in the comment section, not in the chat box, obviously it will disappear. But uh, yes, in the comment section, leave your combined one nationality only uh, in terms of you're only allowed to use the flag once. Oh, can't talk about flags these days because people lose their minds. Um, but uh, you're only allowed one flag uh, in your, uh, one flag per nationality type of thing. You know what I'm talking about. You can only use one player of one nation um, once in your 11. Let us know down below. Alvin Mod says, if Goyokarez uh, came out with a 120 million price tag, is uh, he is out, in my honest opinion. I would love to see him at Arsenal, but not for that amount of money. 
Isaac is my uh, is my option as one of the most overrated players in modern football. Uh, in my opinion, is one of the most overrated players in modern football. I'm not sure if he's overrated. I think he's very, very good. Uh, it just depends on what the price tag would be for Alexander Isaac, of course. So that's that's always gonna that's always gonna create some kind of question mark about whether he's over it under it because it depends upon what Newcastle would be asking for but I agree about the the Goyokerez I don't think I could stretch to 120 million euros for Goyokerez I think that is taking things a bit too far I mean I've just stretched about to, to 100 million um so there you go Lewis says now do the worst 11 nah I'm not I'm not that way inclined I'm not that way inclined to do that Wilson joins us in the chat box which striker would you prefer Watkins or Ozimen and why? Um, it's actually not a bad question at all because they're both they've both got their merits. Ozimen is a player that scored an unrivaled a number of goals last season in in a you know in a, in a crazy amount of 30, I think it was thirty one goals across the season. Less than Goyakarez has this season, by the way, and the season's not done. But um, this season he's not necessarily hit those same heights. He has had injuries. He has been away with. Nigeria, the African Cup of Nations as well. But there's something about he was on the rise and has dipped suddenly. Watkins is older, two years older than Aussie men, and uh, but has constantly just gone in one direction, which is obviously up. Like he's only gone an upward trajectory, which means that if you're to sign either of them, you get I think there's more guarantees with Watkins than there is with Aussie men. I think that Watkins would be slightly less money than Aussie men would be as well. I'm leaning towards Aussie men. Uh, sorry, I'm leaning towards Watkins over over Ozzyman at the moment. And people I don't think necessarily are going to agree with that, but I am leaning slightly towards Watkins, Premier League ready, homegrown, which could have an impact, but probably won't. Um, constantly only going in one direction as a striker. Criminally underrated, by the way. Brilliantly collaborative as well. Stylistically, he scores goals, but he also assists so many goals as well, which is perfect for the style of striker that Arteta likes. Um and so, yeah, for me, uh, I think I'm leaning towards Watkins over Osman, which is a hell of a compliment to, to Ollie Watkins because Osman is a brilliant, brilliant striker. Um, moving forwards to uh, b -b 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 Unknown says, why don't we sign uh, Adebayo from Luton Town? He's had a very good season. I'm not sure whether he's at the level or not. Um, I don't think he's quite at the level to come straight into this Arsenal team. Uh, Arsenal Avengers says, put Ozzyman in this Arsenal team and he becomes a global superstar. You could say the same about Watkins. Why couldn't Watkins go into this team and become a global superstar too? Uh, Dano says, how much disdain do you have for the City and Chelsea? I think people forget that since Abramovich entered the Premier League, we suffered the most. City dismantled us with Clichy, Sanya, Torre, Nasri, Adebayor heading that direction. I have loads. I'm not, obviously from a fan perspective, I cannot stand either of them. Um, you know, and seeing Arsenal... Rival City now is great. See Chelsea and the mire that they are is great. Um, and so from a fan perspective, at least, you know, obviously I'm very happy for that to be the way it is. I don't know what other perspective I, I talk about them. I have to be very objective when I'm when I'm covering Chelsea, of course. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's difficult. Arsenal Avengers, Avengers says, Watkins, nope, I'm afraid. I mean, I'd love for you to explain to me why Ozzyman should be chosen over Watkins because from all of the, what we've seen of both players, Watkins is... is um, Ameka says your disregard for Ozzyman is very clear. And this is the problem that some people have listening to this show. If you've not listened to this show for the long term, you would have known that I've spoken about Ozzyman very, very praisingly. I've talked about him as, as a player that could take Arsenal to another level. And just because I've said I'd prefer one player over another, you get people in the chat box with absolutely no clue as to my thought process saying your disregard for the player is very clear. No, sorry, mate, but you're well off. Um, in terms of those strikers, there's a lot of really good ones about. I just think there's less risk when it comes to a deal for Watkins compared to there is for Ozzyman. Watkins has been more consistent than Ozzyman. He's more collaborative than Ozzyman. He's got Premier League experience compared to Ozzyman. I'm sorry, but there are just so many more pluses when it comes to Ollie Watkins than there is with Ozzyman, who would arguably cost potentially more as well. But maybe you're biased. Maybe you've got biases uh, when it comes to Ozzyman that I don't have. Um, trust me, I have no biases towards any of the potential strikers that we've been linked to. But maybe you do. Uh, Maestro. So Tom hates Ozzyman. Yep, confirmed. I'm just, just like Ivan Tony, just agendas. Agendas against them. Um, Izu says, Tom, sell two and keep one. And Ketia, Smith, Rowe and Nelson. Uh, I would keep Smith, Rowe and sell the other two. Uh, Gary says, Tom, do you think there's any chance of getting Paqueta 
or Mohamed Kudus in the summer. If West Ham have any issues financially, maybe. Um, does Kudus want to come to Arsenal and sit behind Bakaya Saka? I'm not sure. He could play on the left-hand side. He could even play maybe as a midfielder. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, Mike says, Tom likes waffles and pancakes. Yes, the perfect analogy. The perfect analogy. You say to people that you like waffles and someone comes up to you and says, I can't believe you hate pancakes. I like them both, but I do prefer pancakes. I'm going to be very honest. I do prefer them. They're better. And Darren says, is him and Efren Feyenoord still a valid option or is he not at the level? Could be. He's not really been spoken about since the start of the season. He was. He got a lot of hype at the beginning of the campaign and it's kind of flitted away somewhat as the season has gone on, whereas players like Goyokarez have maintained um, their attraction, I guess, is the right option. Um, Lee says, Tom, would you take a punt on Morgan Gibbs-White? Depends on the price again, and it depends upon the options we've got. If Smithrow and Vieira are still here, I don't think it makes much sense to go for Morgan Gibbs White. But if they were to both leave, I guess there's an option to open up that space, and maybe then you can go for him. But otherwise, yeah, not sure. Mech says, You made a point. I, I, I also lean towards Watkins uh, over Ozzyman. It's this thing about, like, you know, if you say that you prefer one thing over the other, someone comes into the chat and says, Your disdain for the other option is so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's like grow up, realize people can have a different opinion to you and explain it coherently. Uh, Jason says, would Watkins age come into it where we say he's still young, but not in the age range Edu and Mikel are looking at? I would love Watkins to come. I'm not sure. I don't think there is necessarily an age bracket where they're just going to simply turn off to it. He's 28. will be 28 at the start of next season in August. So you've got a striker that'll be 29 at the start of the following season, 30 at the start of his third season, 31 at the start of the next season. You know, this you think about players like Van Dyke. People thought he was washed, you know, going into his 30s. This year, he's been arguably one of the, has, has had one of his best seasons, despite being, I think, 32, 33 years of age. Players' careers are extending. I mean, people need to get over this whole age bracket thing at times. I think there's certain scenarios, certain contexts where it comes into play a little bit more. But when a player is performing to the level that Ollie Watkins is potentially performing to, you can't be so disparaging towards him. You really can't. Um, Jakob says, I really like Sudakov from Shakhtar. Um, although I have flashbacks of the Mudrik drama as well. Yeah. Doing business with Shakhtar, never easy. Never easy at all. Uh, Rob says, what's your earliest Arsenal memory? My earliest Arsenal memory? Um, you know, I'm 29, so my earliest memories of watching Arsenal on the telly, and we never had, my family never had like Sky or anything like that, so we, uh, I could only ever watch Arsenal when it was like an, a cup final on, on um, like a live game, was only ever able to watch cup finals. And so the whilst I was certainly aware and watched bits of Match of the Day and stuff like that, I like to think my earliest Arsenal memories are more so when I was watching live rather than watching highlights. Because obviously I watched like Match of the Day and stuff like that. And I always supported Arsenal, even though we watched our local team because I've never had the money to be able to go up to Highbury um, when I was younger. Neither did my dad have really the intention of taking me up there at that age. But um, I think from the perspective of the 2005 FA Cup final, um, the Millennium Stadium is probably, and I know some of you are going to be made to feel very old by that. And I understand that. Um, but that is probably my most coherent memory. Um, I was 10, I think, at the time. Yeah, I would have been 10. That's like the earliest live, watching a game of Arsenal live. Because before that, football wasn't a massive, massive part of my life, to be honest. Um, had loads of other things going on as a, as a, as a single-digit kid. Um, football very much came into my sphere when I reached my my double digits. Um, so there you go. Um, Matt G says, Tom, weren't you going to make an announcement in this morning's show? Um, was I? Was I going to make an announcement? Have I forgotten? I've probably forgotten. Oh, oh yeah. Hold on. I have forgotten something. I have forgotten something. Um, I've definitely, uh, have I got the, yes, I have got it available to, to, to me. I'll, I'll try and get this up on the slides before the end of the show. I, I definitely did say I was going to announce something and it's um, one of our very kind um, listeners and one of our members has uh, has been making up these graphics of the Emirates Stadium um, basically filled and how much there is left to fill um, with 
uh, what is still left to go. So yes, I have got the slides and I can throw it up on the screen for you now. Um, so this is very much courtesy of one of our fantastic and long-term listeners, NZ Gunner, Louis, uh, in the chat box. So thank you to Louis for creating these graphics that are helping us realize how close we are to uh, getting to a full capacity Emirates Stadium with the channel. Uh, so this is Louis in the chat box has made these graphics for us. This is where we're at. We hit 55,000 subscribers uh, a couple of days ago. We have that little bit of the stadium left to fill in terms of the channel between now and the end of the year. So if you are new to the channel, um, this is where we're at. It's a rough estimation that says, Louis, that's fine. Uh, I think it gives a good... Ex I think what that shows you is how crazy big our community is here now, is that we feel... It's basically everything but the away end, right? It's like the away end. We just got to fill out. It's like the buying game where they've been banned. And now we're going to fill the rest of the ground. That is kind of crazy. Um, so thank you to Louis for the very kind graphic. And he's provided some more as we reach different milestones to update it. So uh, I'll try and remember. Louis, you may need to give me a bit of a nudge when we hit different milestones. Um, but we've got one for 56, 57 um, and different milestones as well for certain, uh, like 95% full when we, when we eventually reach it. But yeah, 90% there. We're nearly we're nearly a full Emirates Stadium, which is crazy. Shows you how many people are involved in the channel, which is mad. Um, Sugar says, uh, or Suga says, Tom, thoughts on the midfield of Erdegaard Rice and Frankie de Jong? Um, think it could work. Yeah, I think it could work. But obviously, you've got to try and convince de Jong to leave Barca. And there's been very mixed reports surrounding whether or not he actually wants to leave Barcelona and how much he would cost is another factor as well. But yeah, Frankie de Jong. But there is a lot of fitness question marks about him. So there's some injury questions, I suppose, about him as well. Uh, Lee says, Tom, thinking back, do you remember the Clive Allen transfer fiasco resulting in Sansom coming to the club? <laughs> I told you, my earliest Arsenal memory is like, um, as I said, the 2005 cup final. So my knowledge of of beyond then from just memory is is very 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 poor um i've had to go back the reason why you know we did that joint 11 earlier on in the show where we had to pick one player and you only allowed one nationality um per player liam brady was someone that stands out to me when i watch back clips of arsenal of old and look at those pitches in the 70s and see what arsenal were doing who weren't the best team really for the majority of the 70s and had a player like brady standing out and doing amazing things with the football but little things like that I'm afraid, yeah, that they aren't going to stick in my memory because they just don't. Um, Darren says, is there going to be a call-in? Darren always asks for call-in shows. Darren, are you looking to call in? Is this why? Or do you just like them? There's not been a time, sadly. Um, I've not had the time to do them. I've had, been able to have the time to do these one-hour little interviews with some of our fantastic friends and other um, content creators. But at the moment, there hasn't been. I hope that we can do one. There's not necessarily been a topic either uh, that's been really creating much buzz around Arsenal during this international break. So uh, maybe we'll do one next week out of City. Maybe we'll do one following the City game because there'll be a lot more to talk about as of then. Um, Jackie says there's 800 watching. Let's hit that like button. There's over 800 of you listening on YouTube. There's over 200 of you listening on X as well. If you are listening on Twitter, hop over to YouTube, jump into the chat box and you can have your say and ask your questions as well. Um, Gary says, Tom, do you think that Appenda fits our system? I think that he would be perfect for us. He's got that pace and speed in behind that maybe we are lacking from a centre forward somewhat. Um, I like him a lot. I think he's doing some really good things at Leipzig, but uh, I think that people would probably lean towards Sesco a little bit more from Leipzig than they would Openda. Uh, Jackie says, Tom, who is your midfield and Saka rotation preference? Zibamendi, Fafana, Williams or Liao? I mean, Javi Simmons is my number one Saka uh, competitor, whilst um, at the moment Fafana is probably still my midfielder of choice. Zibamendi is good. I just have a couple of questions. A couple of questions about... Um, about Zibamendi that haven't yet been answered. I don't necessarily think they can be answered until he arrives and and kind of gives me those assurances. So some, you know, there's always going to be some question marks you have that are going to have to wait until the player actually arrives at the club. Uh, Kish says, when's the collaboration with Alex with a different not coming? Uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we had to reschedule that one because of uh, his, his, his scheduling. So uh, hopefully that will be next week um so there you go right um i think we're going to end the show there i've been going over half an hour so thank you so much everybody for listening uh thank you for so many of you for tuning in do drop a like before you head out and subscribe to the channel before 
yeah, you do anything else, really. If you're not subbed, what are you doing? Join the TGT family. And, uh, of course, leave your uh, your lineups down below in the comments section. You're allowed to use one nationality per player. And we need your all-time Arsenal eleven. So that means you can't have Vieira and Omri because that means using two French players. You've got to be careful. So come up with the best Arsenal eleven you can in the comment section. But you're only allowed to use a nationality once. Um, so once you've used the French, once you've used the English, once you've used uh, Cameroon, like I did with that of Lauren, then of course um, that's it. You've got to choose a different nationality for a different position. So there's your challenge. Get going in the comment sections. Drop a like as well, and I'll have a look for a little bit later on today, probably when I'm on my way to Wembley, and see what you've come up with. Have a fantastic day, people. Enjoy yourselves. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay happy and respectful. And, uh, of course, thoughts and prayers at the moment are with uh, the uh, the royal family here in the UK, of course, as well, with uh, Kate, Princess um, Kate, not uh, not having the uh, the best of times at the moment. So thoughts are certainly with her and her family at this, what is, I'm sure, a very difficult time. And all of... The rest of the world that is um, going through similar things as well. Certainly, I um, other family members of mine went through very similar things, and it didn't, you know, s sadly work out the way that we wanted to in 2023. So, yeah, I think it does humble us somewhat in some time to talk about those things. So, thoughts are with them and everybody else suffering very similar things as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Stay safe, well, happy, and respectful, and as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>